Wilson has always had a bit of an ambiguous lineup, but with the introduction of that wild new shift prototype, I figured it was time to settle once and for all what is going on at Wilson. I won't go as far as to say that Wilson rackets are as confusing as what's going on over at head. Off the top of my head, you got the prestige, speed, gravity, radical, extreme, instinct, the boom. So what's that six and a half silos if you count the instinct? So Wilson's not that bad, but their rackets definitely aren't as easily distinguishable as Babolat's lineup. And especially now that they've introduced the shift, I figured it was time to do a breakdown of each different line and how it falls within the greater Wilson lineup in general. We're only going to cover the most standard frames today. I guess what you could call the truest identity of each line. So that means we're covering the Clash 100, Ultra 100, Blade 98, 16 by 19, Pro Staff 97 and Shift 300. And before any of you ask about the burn, it's unfortunately not available in Canada. Sorry. Also, if you enjoy the video, please remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to buy any of these rackets, remember that they are available on our website at racketsandrunners.ca. I'm going to break these down in terms of most playability characteristics. So spin, power, control, feel, stability, and comfort. But I am going to put the most emphasis on the standout feature for each frame. Now for some of these, that's definitely going to be easier than others because there are some pretty big ambiguities going on inside the Wilson lineup. Let's start with the Clash because it's one of the most miscellaneous rackets in Wilson's lineup and honestly one of the weirdest rackets to classify in the tennis industry in general. That's because the identity behind this line is purely based off of comfort and I can't think of a single other racket whose main identity is comfort. I definitely understand why Wilson thought it was a good idea to introduce a comfort line in 2019 because the whole industry had just been through a pretty rough decade of some pretty stiff, uncomfortable tweeners. You could say the Clash V1 was a logical reaction to those tweeners because it basically had everything that made them so popular, but it just lowered the stiffness significantly. That's the same kind of story with the Clash 100 V2. It has basically built off of everything that made the V1 so popular with its 300 gram weight, 100 square inch head size, 16 by 19 string pattern. It's extremely user friendly, like most tweeners at this spec. It's also insanely comfortable. Honestly, I can't think of a single person who would find the Clash 100 uncomfortable. And honestly, if you do, I'm a little bit worried for you. How do I always forget that the Clash weighs 295 grams? Come on, Luca, do better. Usually the issue with soft rackets is that they need a little bit more weight to be as stable as their stiffer counterparts. But because Wilson developed the Clash to be as easy to use and as comfortable as possible, they couldn't really add more weight to it. So instead they focused on developing stabilizing technologies and implemented those into the Clash. Stable Smart, Feel Flex, 45 Braid, whatever you want to call them, they do a very effective job of making the Clash 100 more stable than what you would expect from something with such a low stiffness, low swing weight, and low static weight. The tech definitely is a bit of magical wizardry, but it isn't without its flaws. The feel on the Clash 100 is definitely just a little bit weird. There's a noticeable amount of mushiness in there, and the sweet spot is very, very big. I would say it's a little bit less powerful than your average tweener because of how soft it is, but it still definitely packs a punch and can definitely hold its own from the baseline. In terms of spin, it's a very spin-friendly racket. It's got quite an open string bed and some very open grommets so there's plenty of room for string movement there also with those specs it's pretty quick through the air the only reason it's not top tier for spin is because it's so soft talking about spin let's look at the ultra 100 next now before any of you tell me luca the ultra isn't made for spin it's made for power Hear me out, Wilson doesn't have a dedicated spin line like most other companies, and while I would still say that the Ultra's main identity is still power, it has gotten significantly more spin friendly this time around, and I think there's a few reasons for that. They redesigned the throat on the V4 to make it a little bit more oval than it was on the V3. Now this oval shape is just more aerodynamic, so it naturally quickens up the racket and makes for more racket head speed on contact. Also, these grommets are really, really open, so there is plenty of space for the strings to move, meaning there's tons of snapback here. But the biggest change for me comes with the introduction of that 45 technology in the actual layup. Now, I've only felt 45 braided in soft rackets, but in this stiff of a racket, it adds an element of snappiness when the ball releases from the string bed, which definitely does amplify spin. Actually, now that I think about it, the last Pro Staff 97 was pretty stiff. It had 45 braid and I always found it more spin friendly than previous pro staff. So that pretty much confirms my theory that 45 braid amplifies spin. 
Woohoo! Beyond spin though, that 45 tech also does a really good job of making this version of the Ultra quite a bit more comfortable than it was previously. The previous Ultra was kind of the definition of a bare bones, raw, stiff tweener. So they kind of had to introduce something to make this one more comfortable. Now, as you would expect, it's extremely powerful. It's an Ultra. That's probably its most redeeming characteristic. In terms of feel and control though, that's probably not the Ultra's most redeeming characteristic. Don't get me wrong. If you play with spin, because it has gotten a little bit more spin friendly, you can definitely control your shots that way and you won't have an issue. But just know that it does have a pretty big sweet spot, so it's definitely no precision scalpel instrument. Okay, so the Clash and the Ultra can be a tiny bit confusing because they are so close to being identical in most stats, but because they are so different in terms of stiffness, they're really not all that similar. The Blade and the Pro Staff, on the other hand, can definitely get a little bit confusing. The differences between the two rackets are quite nuanced and more so based off of tiny differences in feel, but that's kind of what we love to dissect as tennis aficionados, isn't it? Let's start with the Pro Staff. If I were to describe this racket using just one word, that word would be precision. At 315 grams and with a fairly high 333 swing weight, it's extremely stable. And even though it did get a little bit softer on the V14, it's still a pretty stiff racket. All of those specs make it rock solid and precise, which gives it some of the best directional control on the market today. When you point the Pro Staff in a certain direction, the ball is going there no matter what. Now trying to differ between the control profiles of the Pro Staff and the Blade is going to get a little bit technical, so bear with me for a second. But if I were to describe the Pro Staff as precise, I would describe the Blade as controlled. Now obviously those are very similar adjectives and honestly in terms of control it's kind of tough to say which is technically better, but the Blade is significantly softer than the Pro Staff, so you feel the ball sink into the string bed quite a bit more. So that mid swing control where you feel like you can just grab the ball and deposit it anywhere you want on the court, you definitely get a lot more with the blade. That's a very addictive sensation for a lot of people. So if you prioritize that soft control over anything else, the blade is the best Wilson racket in the line for you. But if you want that incredibly predictable and solid feel, the Pro Staff is the one. The fact that this is lighter, has a softer flex and a substantially lower swing weight just means it's not quite competitive with the Pro Staff in terms of stability. Pro tip though, add a leather grip to the blade. Makes it really good. The Pro Staff is actually quite a bit more spin friendly than what you would expect from such a classic racket. The string bed is actually pretty open, so there's plenty of room for string movement and snapback. Also, because it's so solid and has such a big swing weight, it's definitely more powerful, again, than what you would expect, and definitely packs more of a punch than the Blade. I'd still say the Blade has a tiny bit more variety than the Pro Staff. It's definitely a little bit more maneuverable, and I'd say it edges it in terms of spin, although it's very, very close. It's also more user-friendly, and that's not just because it's lighter. It might not be by much, but it does have a one inch bigger head size, which just makes the sweet spot a little bit easier to find on a more consistent basis. The two rackets are very similar, don't get me wrong, but I do think the Blade will just work for a slightly wider variety of people. Now what about the shift? I wish I had one to show you, but they're all out for demo right now and with good reason, it's a sick racket. One of the obvious elephants in the room with Wilson's lineup is that they don't have a true spin racket. Babolat has the arrow, head has the extreme, Yonix has the V-core, and I know I just mentioned that spin was top, top tier on the Ultra, but it's definitely not a true spin racket. Well, neither is the shift, but like the Ultra, it does have spin in its DNA. Now, a quick little disclaimer here, the shift is technically still a prototype, so if that makes this little mini review null and void when the full release comes out, so be it, but I kind of doubt it. Anyways, the shift is a 99 square inch racket, so that makes it fit right in between the two categories that we just covered, the Clash and the Ultra for power and user friendliness, and the Blade and the Pro Staff for control. Honestly, the shift plays more like those smaller head size players frame. The sweet spot is very small on this racket and very, very precise. It's got fantastic feel, especially when you're hitting with topspin. It's not confirmed yet, but there is a widely believed rumor that inside the actual layup of the graphite, there's some sort of spin technology that's made to amplify string snapback. Now again, I can't confirm it, but what I can tell you is that this racket loves to hit with spin and does struggle a tiny bit on flat shots. Now it is pretty stiff, so when you do find the sweet spot, it can definitely launch the ball, but because it is so spin friendly and so precise, I pretty much never had any issues with control except for, like I said, sometimes on flat shots. I do have to say that I think 300 grams with a 310 strung swing weight 
which my demo swung at before customization, was just a little bit too light and unstable. Now I did customize it to 310 gram static with a 320 swing weight, which I thought played pretty much perfectly and that was kind of the sweet spot with this racket. So what I would tell Wilson is upon general release, those are the only two little things that I'd want you to change and then it's pretty much a perfect racket. Okay, so now that we've covered all that, let's summarize Wilson with a few one-liners, shall we? The Clash is for comfort, the Ultra is for power, the Pro Staff is for precision, and the Blade is for control, and the Shift is for a bit of everything. And for those of you that are going to ask, I'm still not sure if I'm shifting. With this information, I hope that I've helped narrow down the options on what is a fantastic but definitely a little bit confusing lineup from Wilson. Now remember, if you'd like to demo any of these rackets, we've got them available in store, or you can check them out at racketsandrunners.ca.